Welcome to a Game of Thrones. Yesterday was kind of setting up the scenario, so you can consider this the true episode one. So we're actually going to get, hopefully, a fair amount of game plan today. I've also added some extra mods that I thought were kind of thematically appropriate that I completely forgot to add last time for whatever reason. So, we're of course playing as the last and final descendant of the very cursed Bloodstone Emperor, and it's our job. Like I said, we're going to roleplay it a little bit, and I saw your feedback. A lot of you want to play an evil character, which I think is kind of expected. A lot of you want me to play a good character. Like I said, we'll see how the characters themselves end up. And then if they tend more towards evil, we can embrace it. If they tend more towards the good, we'll embrace that as well. We'll see how the characters themselves end up being as they're, you know, educated and as they play through the game here. But of course, if our character starts becoming evil, and of course we already have that minus 15 opinion with everybody, then they're more likely to be declared war on, have their titles revoked, kicked from the council, whatever else. And the more persecuted our character becomes, the more evil it's going to allow us to be. Because of course our character's going to get more and more pissed off at people, start building up negative opinion. The more we dislike people, the less I'm going to care about, or the less the character would care about, of course, going to war with them or at least doing horrible, spiteful things against them. So I've, I've, I've set up a couple more mods here as well that should give us some things to do during this early game before we can really get into expansion. First thing is, I've enabled the uh, the, the Bloodlines mod here. So we are a devout follower of the gods of UT. There are many gods and divine figures I may worship. Chief amongst them are the Lion of the Night, the God of Death and Divine Justice, the Maiden made of Light whose face is the Sun, the Divine Emperors, living and dead, whose heirs are still gods on Earth, or the woman with the monkey's tail, whose action ended the long night. So we can choose any of these aspects, and of course, like choosing an aspect in the base game, they'll give us various different bonuses here. So dedicated to the Lion of the Night. So the Lion of the Night, according to the wiki, was the character that uh, basically killed and stopped the Bloodstone Emperor, devoured him or something like that. So we could pledge ourselves to the line of the night, and that would increase people's opinion of us somewhat, because, you know, we're sort of revering the character that stopped our evil ancestor there. What does he worship, by the way? Starry Wisdom. Wow, yeah, there we go. Uh, founded long ago, joined the Golden Empire by the, of the Dawn by the Bloodstone Emperor, who began worshipping a black monolith which fell from the heavens. Yeah, that's cool. And of course, we can. they are less of a religion now, more of a society. So we can actually join that. And again, if we do end up becoming a lunatic or possessed or whatever else, then we can absolutely join the cult of the Star of Wisdom if it becomes an option here. Cynical, hedonist, cruel, torture, ruthless, cruel. Let's say cruel twice. I think I meant to say cannibal. Uh, possessed or lunatic, and then we can't be just honorable or kind. Um, we can't have any piety, which is very, very difficult to do. Piety is equal to or greater than zero. That's very difficult. Um, oh, wait. All of the following must not be true. Yeah, no, we mustn't. We need to get negative piety somehow. So I guess we have to be a massive sinner and not be too particularly religious to start off with. It's going to be quite hard. But depending, again, if we're, if we're prosecuted or whatever by our other fellow members, then maybe maybe we could join that. Um, we could go for... So the Lion of Light gives us plus one martial, plus one monthly piety. Maiden Maid of Light gives us plus five fertility and plus one monthly piety. Divine Empress in Gold and Jade gives us stewardship or the piety or the Monkey Tails Woman gives us diplomacy. I think for the time being, given that the dynasty is so small and weak, and given that it's only us and then some very, very distant relatives, what, two other distant relatives left, I think it would make sense to go for the Maiden Maid of Light just to quickly start things off here. So we are absolutely going to pick her. Normally, this event, the Yeet picking a patron deity event, is only possible if you're zealous. I've actually edited it so all Yeet characters can pick, just so it adds a little bit of uh, intrigue and interest. I might even make the, uh, the, the, the traits opposite one another as well. So if you worship the Lion and the Light, people who worship the Maiden Maid of Light might not like that too much for hopefully obvious reasons there. I might do that later on as well to add a bit more dynamic nature to the system. The Fair Maiden Maid of Light is now our patron deity. In theory, everyone through Yeet, yeah, there we go, will pick... Sorry, what? This man, ha this man has a mammoth? How the hell did he end up with a mammoth? How strange. Okay, um, not entirely sure why, but we won't worry about that too much. So the other thing I've done as well is we have access to the Great Trade League. Now, originally I wasn't going to include this, but I thought to myself, that doesn't make any sense because in Yee-T, in the expanded uh, Game of Thrones lore, there's an area called Trader Town, this one here, which is famous for, funnily enough, being the central trading point for not only the whole of the Yee-T Empire, but, but most of... Essos, just in general, most of, uh, obviously, Eastern Essos especially, but the trade routes from Trader Town go all the way over to Bravos, Pentos, Mir, whatever else, and of course, we open up the trade map there, you can actually quite clearly see, it is the major trade post in the East, I mean, just look at the amount of gold it brings in and whatnot, but that actually goes straight through the Dothraki lands, all around Slaver's Bay, up towards Pentos and, and, and Bravos there as well, so... The trade league makes perfect sense. You know, it's not just something I've thrown in there for uh, for random random effect. Give us something to do. It actually does make perfect sense. It's even called Trader Town there, as you can see. So, maybe going for one of the provinces on whatever the equivalent of Silk Road is, the Far East trade routes here, would make a lot of sense. There's one right next door to us there. Unfortunately, it's the capital of our league. So we probably won't be going for that one too much. We don't want our capital, do we? No. Can we join the league? Uh, 
Really, stewardship of 10. Do we not have that? Oh my god, we're a skilled steward and we don't have that. Okay, we could take the business folks or whatever. That would allow us to start building up our realm a little bit too. Now, I believe we also have access to the... So, I didn't actually enable this for our last playthrough. So, this will give us something uh, something interesting to look at that wasn't actually part of the last one. This should also allow us to see the resource map mode. Yeah, so this is a very, very cool system. So, every province... I, d I don't know what game really to liken this to. Um... I can't think of any games that have a similar thing off the top of my head here. But basically, different provinces will produce different resources. So, say, for example, uh, is, do, does our province have resources? Oh, it does. Very cool. So, oh, no, wait, we're this one, aren't we? Yeah, cool. So, we actually haven't found anything yet. But our province next door had, uh, I don't know if you saw that, had fishery, butchery, whatever else. So, we can just use this character to access the map. They're just a cartographer. They don't do anything else there. Um, and they won't do anything as well if we assign them. They just give us access to other map modes there. So, you can train and buy resources cheaply from certain provinces, sell them to other provinces that, of course, don't have them and are in a bit more demand. Gives us a lot more economy to mess around. If we really want to get deep in that, that would give us a lot of accelerants. Along with that, I've enabled the specials building mod, which gives us access to a load of other stuff as well. Of course, Yeet is the Golden Empire. as these giant cities. Supposedly the biggest city in Yeet makes King's Landing look obviously tiny. It's about 50 times the size of something ridiculous like that. Very sort of fantasy. But having all of these extra buildings makes perfect sense in that regard. So being able to check out some of these might fail the series. Plus it gives us a, an ability to play tour for a while. With that, I promise that will be the last little bit of setup we've got to do here. So let's actually let a little bit of time tick here. So the first thing we're looking for is, of course, a, a son, a daughter. We are married to an astute giant. I feel like the traits are slightly different from yesterday. It might be where I've enabled one of these mods. I didn't realize that they had traits with them. Um, we didn't always have leaves. Obviously, it's not completely fucked up. Our wife is a giant now, which is quite nice. Um, that also probably explains that other guy's mammoth. Hey, well, it's not much of a big deal. Just one trait has shifted. So I'm certainly not going to disable all of these gameplay effects to deal with that. But for the time being, we've really just got to wait until we can get a kid out of our wife. Is there anything else we can do here to... I mean, we can send her a gift. We can try and sway her as well. I mean, opinion does play into it a very, very small amount. But let's try and make her like us a little bit. Oh, God. An important guest arrived today and was most insulted when I... I, struck with tongue-tiedness, was unable to greet them. Is that because we are we are shy? Man, um, is there any way we can get rid of that? Because that's pretty shitty. Again, we'll just let the character drive himself a little bit. Oh, your commandant Pock has eloped and gotten married against your wishes. He and his love and Ling have decided they wish to be together so much they married in secret. Um, he's forfeited his right to inheritance. Does he even have any inheritance? So we can just disinherit him so that if he ever did inherit, or, or if he if he was in line for anything, he wouldn't be able to get it. Um, he doesn't, he's not heir to anything, so I don't know why we... I, I mean... Oh, but if I say he... We lose 50 prestige if I say I don't care about my commandant rushing off and getting married to a random woman, because I really don't care. Um... I guess it's just the way they do things here. Okay, that's a little annoying. I guess we will say that and piss off our... What is he to us? Pock. Pock is our... Oh, he's a commander, right? Um, yeah, he's only got four martial honesty. We, I, I don't mind him being pissed off. We can't afford to lose any more prestige at this point. Try my best to be conciliatory with N Nalora, but we simply couldn't come to an agreement about shit. Um, minus 20 opinion with our wife. Well, that's great. I'm really glad I didn't just waste any money on her. Shit. We need to take seduction. If I'd have known that this was so important to the culture, I definitely would have taken that. Because we can get up to 20 lovers with that, don't forget. I feel like, uh, Van... Oh, by the way, I renamed him as well. I renamed the dynasty because, of course, this character was a random character with random traits and whatever else. He also had a random dynasty, so the dynasty of Chol. I thought that we needed something a bit more appropriate for the playthrough. So now we are, uh, Count Van T.E. of Yee-T. That one makes a little more sense, in my opinion. So we're going to be... <laughs> Hopefully when this eventually, maybe when eventually we become Emperor, we can flip it over from Yeet to TE. Just to really rub it in. Man, um, when can we flip it over to Seduction then? 82.97. Oh good, another two years of our wife hating us and potentially no kid. We're only, it's okay, we're only 45. It's not like we've only got another two years on this planet. But another tiger hunt. Well, given how well the last one went. No, I think we should probably save up a lot of cash and try and spend it on something. Just abdicate, just give up right now. Um... My god, a council shit too. Is there anyone we can invite to court who is better than these? Let's just say join court, yes, and invite literally anyone willing to... Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, right, so we've gained back a little bit of opinion with certain people because we've taken that... Yeah, you see a lot of them are made in the night here. Um, oh, it's just general UT opinion, isn't it? Okay, that's actually helped us out quite a little bit. Let's invite you over. Oh, women can't be councillors besides... Um, Besides the entry character, besides our spymaster. Let's invite you over. V Sun, invite to court. Who else we got? I need uh, a better diplomat, too. That's really important. Oh, he'll do. For a Shadow Man from Stigai. Wow. Uh, so Stigai being the cursed city, of course. We've, we've done a playthrough in uh, in a shy if you're interested in that one, the, the top box buff playthrough. We know what Stigai is like. 
Welcome, my friend. I'm sure you're not going to cause any issues. Uh, let's make you... Oh, we don't want to make him chancellor. We want to make him minister of justice. Right, get him fabricating claims. We're looking at 32% chance yearly with that card. That's a lot better. Let's send him a gift. I'll raise him to nobility. Just give him any chance he's got. And hopefully that'll make him stick around as well. Did he just lose opinion? Fired from council. What? We didn't do that, though. Fired from council. Oh, my God. I bet when we raised him to nobility, it fired him. So it could give him the house and then put him back. Well, that sucks. Because now it's minus 15. So the whole point of raising him to nobility... For fuck's sake, it's a minus 25 for raising him to nobility. Well, that's garbage. Okay, we've got to remember we've got to do that. <laughs> Great. Okay, well, that's not completely fucked us then. I didn't want him to leave our court. That's why I wanted to raise him to nobility and, and win him over a little bit. Because there's no reason he wouldn't just completely leave at this point. Fantastic. Let's start fabricating some claims things. In terms of troop count, we're actually not doing too badly. If we make some clever investments early on here, we can... You know, even just a few troops here and there with our levy bonuses, whatever else, might be able to allow us to grab some other territory immediately nearby. What? Do you have, like, a trade route or something? No, they're also not particularly rich, especially compared to us. It actually might be better to go for this more southerly province, but I think this guy had... Yeah, so this all counts as a separate duchy as well. So ideally, we want to make the duchy of Fujin to start off with. That definitely could not... Does that exist? Yeah, he actually owns that himself. Right, okay, so that's going to be our first goal, really. It's obviously to ascend to Duke. That gives us access to a lot more options. Crown focus, whatever else. Join society is a lot easier, too. Um, vote with him and go for a favor. Uh, sure, I'll take a favor. That means two characters are a favor now. Sure, so even if people hate us, we're building a legal bit of backing there. Our wife is apparently a really good marshal. So we could put her on the council, I guess, because she's our wife. So we'll, we'll put her on the council there. She still completely hates us. Um... I can't even I can't even send her a gift. And we're kind, so we can't even antagonize anyone either. That sucks. Okay. Let's get you training troops. She's she's skilled, if nothing else. Uh, Minister of the Treasury. If we could find a better treasurer, that would help out a lot as well. Yeah, there's really no one better, is there? Um You know what? Actually, inviting this guy just so we can replace this Oh, actually, he's already in a call. There we go. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Uh, what about what about in terms of intrigue? San would be better, and he would probably like us more if we give him a seat on the council as well, because he's already... He's 14 intrigue, minus 10 opinion. She's minus 6. Much, sorry, minus 8. Oh, that is minus 6. And she's already on the council. Mr. Stream apparently can't read at all. Um, oh, San's also a good learning skill, though. Ah, uh, this is really difficult. We, we're, we're so slim on the ground for just any characters that would be good to join us right now. Let's get you, I mean, performing charity would work a little bit more. Local revolt risk is lowered. Chance of him... Um, I was trying to just straight up dying though. Pockets of charity money. That would mean we could put him in prison and take the money off of him. So that also does kind of work in a weird way. Wait for this guy to turn up. Replace you with you. Okay. Better scheme. Now he's minus 11. Why? Personal diplomacy? Twist emperor's but prestige short reign. Um, I don't know, but I'm going to send him a gift because of course he's our spy master. Right. Now let's save up for a while. That's enough of bringing people to our court. The council's clearly a lot better. So that's a great start. Okay, this is actually really good. So join a particularly heated argument with the council. Count Chen Jin Sun steps in as you are about to make a fool out of yourself. He's able to argue your point. We can earn a favor, but gain 75 prestige. Getting rid of this negative prestige is another one of our very, very immediate goals here. We can't go to war with negative prestige, mainly because, of course, going to war costs, you know, base 250 prestige most of the time. So we need to at least be out of negative prestige before we can do that. Uh, we're trying to sway this guy, aren't we? Because that will increase the chance to fabricate claims. Okay. Um, I don't want to lose any more prestige, but I will say I'm curious about his faith. There is a chance of us getting a sympathy for his religion, therefore, shadow binders. Not that be such a big deal, but I feel like a descendant of the Bloodstone Emperor becoming sympathy for shadow binders is kind of a bad thing. Kind of sets a bad precedent, huh? There are two peasant families in Baumia who have been locked in a bitter feud for generations. Conflict has escalated to the point where it's discussed in the circles of nobility. Um, could be a golden opportunity to practice your diplomacy. I feel like we need that with only two diplomacy right now. Put an end to the squabble. We'll sponsor a meeting between the families. You've invited the two of you. I don't remember this one. I don't think I've ever done this event before. To a local end, hoping to reach some sort of agreement. Is this from the family focus? I have no clue. Appeal to their sense of reason, or we can flatter them. Um... One clutch is a live chicken. All of them look moderately inbred. This could be a challenge. Uh, let's flatter them. I feel like appealing to the sense of reason to the inbred will never work. Make them think they are big and good and nice. Boy, you have the greatest crops we've seen this side of UT. My friends, you say with a warm, as warm as a smile as you can muster. I think you know why I've called your great families here. As you suffer from this tragic conflict, the entire realm suffers with you. Mention their patriotic duty or soothe their tempers. Let's try and soothe their tempers. A man's kind. He's kind. He's humble. Patriotic duty definitely doesn't suit him. Soothe their tempers. In a firm but kind voice, you say, many of you are angry. I know you have every reason to write. Too much blood has been spilled between your families. I feel like this is a test of me, if nothing else. Threaten them with violence or lambast their childish behavior. Um, 
Ah, oh, man, I feel like they're so stupid they'd only give in to violence, but my, my guy's not got the brawn to back it up, really, has he? Lambast their childish behavior. Ah! You thump your fist on the table for dramatic effect. In the end, are we not all adults here? It's so easy to resort to the bickering of children for nobility and commoners alike, but that is when we must find it in a strength to rise, rise above such pettiness. Let us walk out of here as the adults we are. What say you? The peasants stand up in unison and the intern silent. Come on, you got this. You've got this. Van, you are literally working up from nothing here. He's trying to get squabbling inbreds to work alongside him for once it's not our family members. Peasants stand up in unison. Oh my god. It's doubtful whether they understood half of what you said, but most of your message seems to have carried over. The peasants give a rousing applause. Crime members from the two families hug each other unless the two marriages between their bloodlines are agreed upon on the spot. Oh wow. Seems the feud is over. That went better than expected. Gain two diplomacy. Fantastic start there for Van. I don't think I've ever seen that event before. If that's part of the Game of Thrones well, that's a really cool little addition, huh? So, as for societies then, which is obviously where a lot of the gameplay really comes from in, in modern CK2, we can't join any. Becoming lunatic, fire obsessed, we'll let us join the Citadel, the Alchemist Guild, all the cult, the Star of Wisdom. Great Trade League again would be, I think, our first port of call here. We just need a tiny little bit more stewardship. When can we... Obviously, we want to do seduction first, though. Shit. Um, oh, we can actually pick one now. Let's go seduction first, then. So we can seduce anybody, but take them as a concubine immediately afterwards. So it's not, shouldn't make them a bastard or anything like that, as long as we immediately do it. Because, of course, they're not going to give birth in the seconds it takes for that. Uh, let's check out our court, then, for... Let's go court, women who are unmarried, because we don't want to be making any any enemies right now. Uh, married, no. Okay, there we go. 21. She'll do. What's that? The dancing plague? Oh, dear. Well... It sucks to be you, my friend. Right, Ja, let's start seducing her. This might also give us bonus to diplomacy. I actually don't remember. Is court Tom Cat diplomacy or intrigue? One or the other, right? I mean, it makes sense either way. I have my sights set on Ja, but the age difference could cause quite a bit of a scandal. Oh, no. If the court gossips take notice of my efforts, but she's such a little mortal. I mean, our guy is shy, so this is probably going to be very, very difficult. He's ambitious, but shy. I think this works. Oh, great start. Fantastic. I sent Jara a beautiful necklace covered and covered with her room with wildflowers. Today I found a bed full of wilted petals and a bent rusty nail on my pillow. I'm irresistible, but actually I've changed my mind. My god. Is Count... Is, is Van T. Yee a nice guy? Is this what we're being told right now? Alright, let's find someone else then. Should we just see... Alright, here's a weird one. Women who are unmarried join court preferably. Who have we got? Uh, let's maybe go for... Anybody with congenital traits will obviously be an incredible start. She's got an artifact, do you now? What have you got? Is that a Valyrian steel sword? Oh my god, I know exactly what she is. She's a smith who's stolen someone's sword and fled. Can we see the history of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is what... I, so, she's been invited to someone's court, and, and hence why she got Astronomer Erudite. She's been invited to someone's court to reforge their sword. She's stolen it and fled to a ruin. So she's hiding out with this Valyrian sword. We can invite her to court and try and seduce her and maybe even bring that to our realm. So if she dies without an heir, that sword will... So the rules of inheritance are actually kind of complicated for Valyrian steel. So it says there, the current heir, who's the same dynasty, and then if the, she doesn't have an heir, any grandchild who's head of the dynasty, if, she, if that doesn't exist, a child, blah, 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 we are ninth. So our, So her liege will be able to inherit it because she has no... She has no family members at all because she was a randomly generated character. So if we seduce her, or at least marry her, or, or find some way to do this, it would be honestly worth divorcing her otherwise wife and marrying her instead because she's got Valerian Steel. So we would definitely, our kid would inherit that. It's called passion as well. So if we actually manage to seduce this woman and get a sword, I think that's kind of appropriate. Let's see if we can manage it. Uh, she's 20. She is, however, such a little morsel. Good God, Van. You are a, you're an animal. You're an animal, my man. Oh, Oh, nice. I arranged for a scented love letter to be left on Qian's Yen's pillow in an attempt to woo her. And it seems to have struck true. And she has left one on Martin confessing her attraction to me. Oh, -ho, time to up the ante. Sorry, is CK2 just a dating sim? Have I... Sorry, is this, is this game just been a dating sim all along? I sent Qian Yen a beautiful necklace and covered her room with wildflowers, but I've heard nothing back. You're trying too hard. Chill. D dial it back a little bit. I mean, a beautiful necklace isn't really going to impress her when she's got a Valyrian steel sword. Um, could have been worse. Keep going. Keep going, Van. We believe in you. I found Ja sympathetic to my romantic cause. She and Qian, was Ja not the one that turned us down? Ja, I guess she's like, oh yeah, I'll palm you off on her. That way, uh, that way I won't have to put up with you anymore. She did actually re she did actually reject us, right? Yeah, she was the one that rejected us. Cool. Uh, obviously not cool. And three of us had a great time. I can tell she's falling for me before she barely notes her friend leaving. I lean in and whisper in her ear. Uh, what would she be into? Make, uh, confess my love. I mean, she's, she's zealous and erudite and an astronomer. You know what? 
poetry. She's she's erudite. This has got to work. This cannot fail. Shit. Jerks away from me with a shocked expression. Count Yi T Yi Fan. You're old enough to be my father. She ran off giggling. I think this series is going exactly how we wanted it to. Virtue is strong with this one. Damn it. Passing judgment onto the criminals from the safety of your throne. I've never noticed the, the shade from that one. A young noble is brought before you. You quickly come to the conclusion that the man is indeed guilty. He is of noble birth. Um, we could get a character in our court called Foy. Now, this actually might not be bad because these, these, these randomly generated characters tend to be quite good. Definitely better than just random as you will find in your court anyway. And when we have a sort of dearth of good council members, it's not bad, but it of course could be a lot better, especially our chancellor. We might want to spend the 25 prestige in any other situation, but when we've got minus 300 for the time being, we'll take whatever prestige we can get. Ah, we managed to chance upon Q and alone in the kitchen when she came down for her usual late snack. We talked about it and laughed for hours, and I can tell the attraction is growing. Uh, confess my love, make a lewd suggestion or quilt. Well, we tried the love poetry last time. Fuck it. Make a lewd suggestion. Damn it. Count T. Yi Van, you're old enough to be my father. She's coward. Coward. That's exactly why that should have worked. I'm attending a festive outing with Q yet. Yeah, you can sort of see where. Unfortunately, half the court is also here. Um, leave her a note to meet me by the stream. We're here for hours. But the sun is about set. She's clearly not coming. God damn it. Found her in the kitchen once again. Um, I mean, we've tried the lucid edition. We've tried the love poetry. Let's go for Let's just go for the, the love confession. Just go for it. Are we actually... Is it working, though? Attractive plus 50. Flattered plus 15. It is working. Confess. Yes. Nailed it. I'm sh I know how to cajole women. Kyuyan and I spent the night making sweet illicit love in her bed. I snuck off in the way I was leaving the court clueless. I hope. It doesn't matter either way, because now we can take her as a concubine, right? Um, so we have to let our love grow, pause it, and then take lover as a concubine. So there we go. Concubines may bear the rule as legitimate children. And just from that event alone, when you succeed with that event, there's, I believe it's a 25% chance for falling pregnant immediately. So that could be a guaranteed heir. More importantly... It's a guaranteed Valerian Steel Sword called Passion. I feel like we, we earned that. We earned that. That took bloody ages. Oh, okay. This could be a problem. Travelers and merchants bring word that a sorcerer lord claiming to be the Yellow Emperor from a dynasty of a fallen from a thousand years has launched an invasion on the Golden Emperor of UT. Is he... I mean, he could actually... I mean, he's got Mystic. He's only 38, though. Oh, he's actually not part of the family either, but he does have a claim. I wonder what happens if this guy wins. Because that would surely end the current line of emperors, whatever the hell they're called. The, the Azure Emperors? Yeah, Yellow Emperor. How, how long ago was that then? Because I, di I didn't even remember that seeing that in the uh, in the family tree. Um, the Zor Slayer is so good. Um, Scarlet Emperor Low Boo, the boy too bold by half. Incredible name. Oh yeah, there he is. Wow. So he's, he's he's either a descendant from this tree or he is that guy. Chai. Yeah, it's the same house as well. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's keep a close eye on that because that could completely shake up the empire or. Might even break up the Empire. Because, again, like I said, with the Mega War system, any of these kings could break free if they don't believe the Empire is, is, is strong enough to be able to repel this guy. So only three kings have actually joined him in the war. That's three out of one, two, three. Another three, four, including Traded Town, has remained separate. This could be kind of big. So our liege is supporting the throne. Um, We could also say we're supporting the throne, to be honest, because it won't really affect us. It will just raise the usual vassal troops and take them off with him. So that, obviously, the Dukes don't become independent or anything like that. Um, yeah, we'll just say support the throne. It'll take a little bit of our vassal levy. But besides that, it's not going to be such a big deal for us unless they head up and burn our shit down. Oh, man. He's got 8,000 troops. How many? Is that what he's got in total? 8,800. And what's the Emperor got again, then? 71,000. Oh, you know what? You know what? I think he'll probably be fine in hindsight. Oh, very suspicious. My wife, Nalora, tells me she's Praganonat. But that cannot be right, can it? I mean... We did take the seduction focus, so it's it's not impossible here. Uh, doubt besets me. We are a paranoid man. I feel like we have to investigate. We're a paranoid. Yeah, absolutely hire someone to find out. Uh, my man would not just stand by and let that happen. 25 gold and 50 prestige in exchange for what I claim on the county of Fujin. Um, that's incredible. That's obviously incredible. Your legion fellow vassals may be threatened by this expansionist behavior. They already hate us. But this could be obviously very, very dangerous if we continue down this route. So I'm thinking we should become a duke. And then just lay low for a long time. Like, not try and keep fabricating claims. Normally in Tika 2, I think you would if you had no way of expanding. Just keep fabricating claims. But for the time being, let's maybe grab just the Duchy of Fujin. We're going to have to go to this war, the war with this guy anyway. So we might as well go to war for everything. Go do all of that. Press all the claims at once. Get the Duchy. And then just, like I said, lay low. Sort of keep our head down. Build ourselves up. Join, join a league or do something like that. Not find anything suspicious about a pregnancy. Um, hire more spies. Absolutely. He wouldn't confront it directly because our man's shy. 
So let's absolutely hire more spies and see if we can dig something up. A man claimed to be a lord who disappeared seven years ago has found his way to a castle. He sings of the children of the forest. How interesting. Um, we can get... Oh, nice. We can get a random court here. Yeah, that's really, really good. So this is... Um, a man named Yi has arrived in the court of Count T. Yi Van. Welcome. Is he any good? That's the real question. Let's check our courtiers and see if he is... Uh, this guy, I guess. Yi Bathi. Um, is not... Terrible. He's got okay entry, but he's such a mixed bag, like a mistake, incompetent commander, cruel, envious? Yeah, maybe not. The spy- Ah, oh, there we go. The spies I hired at great expense to discover anything suspicious about my wife have failed to turn up anything at all. Guess it must be mine then. Oh, God, but she suspects she must have found out. Oh, that sucks. Oh, no, we suspected her. I don't know. Think I don't think that would be a minus 25. I mean, he suspects it, but he's got no proof. Yeah, I mean, we'll be able to tell, right? Because if the, I mean, unless it was another a YT man that slept with her. I mean, it could, should come out our ethnicity or hers. I don't know. We'll wait and see. I don't much ideas. Lose five gold in exchange for military innovations. Fuck it. Let's go into debt along with the negative prestige. It's good tradition to have some gossips around a pregnant woman. We'll have some maids dispatch. We are kind of the debt. Oh my god, the debt is mounting up. And of course, in, in the Game of Thrones, when you do get the lack of funds, minus 25% armor morale, minus 10 opinion, and my, plus 1% national revolt. So with everything else, I imagine we are particularly hated right now. Our liege hates us by minus 39. Threatened by the claim fabrication, twisted emperor's blood, lack of funds, both ambitious, prestige. My god. Um, that's not good. That's really, really not good. We need to be very, very careful. Ah. T. Yi He Son. Do I even have to change that name? Oh, he's he's giant. He's giant. Certainly looks like us. Um, let's go for it. He son. I, I do think let's knock the sun off the end. So his name is just He T Yi. Incredible name. Welcome. He T Yi, the future heir of this dynasty, or T Yi He, depending on which way you want to read it. Um, what do we want to educate him? So I actually did like the, uh, the Wheel of Fortune dude during the last Series A on the channel, which was essentially we picked somewhere on this, and then for every kid that was born, we went around the wheel. That way, every child ended up with a distinct personality, and we actually had some really unique characters come out of it. So I'm probably going to do that again. We'll start wherever we feel like for our first character. Then, of course, if we start with this kid, and we end up going for, say, Thrift, and our next kid is garbage, but the next kid after that is genius, then we've got a for we've, we're sort of, sort of forced to picking faith for them. Or alternatively, we could do it where we have a one-down system. So say, with this kid, we might want to pick Struggle. And then for the next kid, if he's genius, we'll pick Duty and then cross them off. But then we can't do that again until we've gone around the whole thing. Let me know what you think about that system instead. Um, I think let's go with, what do you think, Pride? We could go with Pride. No, 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 we don't want Pride. Struggle. Maybe go for a military character. Just so that we can defend our realm a little bit more. Because, of course, if we are expanding like this, and if we're pissing a lot of people off, rebellions, maybe revoking titles could also be a concern. Oh, man. But we could just go for the duty or the... Let's go for thrift. Let's go for thrift. I feel like we, we'd be a better educator with thrift as well. And, of course, we're probably going to have to educate the kid ourselves also. Um, could have his mother do it. She does have... To all stew. Oh, man. Patient is... Oh, she's got patient and slothful. So just cancel out. Oh, this guy. No is incredible. Patient and diligent. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm going to have no educate. He, ye, t. He, he, t, ye. My god, that's going to get confusing. King is dead. Long live the king. Or in this case, long live Boomin, the fourth azure emperor of the golden empire of Yuti, benign sovereign of the island of Lang and the Dread Sea, protector of the five forts and other northern of the master marshes and blah, 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 blah. All hail, <laughs> all bow before the azure emperor. Welcome. 39, and unsurprisingly, he immediately hates us. Fantastic. That's really what I wanted. Um, oh, we're prospering already. Very, very nice. 5% reinforcement rate. So we actually need a levy size, not really reinforcement rate to some extent. How are we doing? 5,800 men. And how's he doing? 5,000. Oh my god. If we did actually go to war for this province, just got to wait for that fabricate claim to kick in. When we get this other one, we'll go to war for the whole thing. And I actually think we could probably win it. We've just got to rely on having good commanders and then also having our marshal be constantly training troops. If we do get that 12% chance yearly of... Hey, nice. Thank you. Of the levy reinforcements, this could be big or we die. Van... Van. <laughs> you fucker. Okay. <clears throat> thank God. Can I just say, thank fucking God we had that kid. The issue is, we're going to lose our Valyrian Steel Sword unless... Unless... There is a way. There is a way. We marry our father's concubine... This is so fucked up. We marry our stepmother for her sword. Perfect. It's genius. 
Uh, so we can marry her when we're 14. That's in another 14 years time. That would make her 36. So it's still possible we could have a kid with her. And then, of course, that guarantees the sword. Wow. What a shit start. And there we go. Blessings upon you and your house. So we've lost our claim immediately as well. For fuck's sake, game. He, T, ye. Glorious ruler of the realm. My father deserves to be honored with a funeral. And absolutely he does. We've got a fresh slate. We're starting from fresh. This actually might be the best thing for it. My father deserves to be honored with a funeral. How? Who will you invite? Uh, just the ET family. Cost 10 gold. I don't know who you people are. Um, she, T, ye. And uh, we can get... Nalora Joanne Stanis. Sure. Bring her on. It, my, my, my mother, and she's, she's still like, cool, right? Yeah, she is good. Uh, my mother, and she also dislikes because of our twisted blood. Probably reminds us too much of our father. Of course, she didn't really like. God, that's loud. Holy shit. Um, let's not spend too much. Let's not, we can't afford it. Just the ET family. Just the DE family. I've got to fuck that up so many times. Now for the most disappointing feast of all time with some random woman who I didn't even know existed and our mother who hates us. My god, this is sad. And of course, we had to go into a little bit of debt there just to be able to afford some, some various bits and mobs. This is such a sad feast. But there we go. The friends and family of the departed, all three of us, as well as the noble lords of the realm arrived at the keep, the body of Count Yi T Van, T Yi Van. Good god, someone keep counting the amount of times I've fucked that up. We're clean and prepared for viewing, dressed in the finest funeral garbs and accessories, sits in the castle, placed at the feet of the ruling seat. The crowd buzzes, hush whispers, cut the mortal cries, blah, 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 blah. So it's done. He died a natural death at the 12th moon at age 49. He was a man who was known to be compassionate. Was he? I guess kind of, sort of. Count T. Yi Van was a competent swordsman and not a warrior. Songs have written off. I couldn't think of any better to sum that character up. And so it is done. We gain 40 piety. Well done, everyone. Good work. At least we're out of the negative prestige, huh? That's something. So, we do have rich childhood enabled, which means that we should hopefully get some pretty interesting things to do as this child. It's not just going to be... Fortune Planet Child and Seeker 2 is normally obviously quite boring. You're just basically waiting for the 16 years to go past so that you can do some other stuff. But this time around, we've got rich childhood, so we should have some way to shape our character. You know, develop his personality and turn him into someone worth playing. So we can become bitter rivals with this character. Uh, I was clever and hit them until C told on me, and now I have to do all of it. We were going to become a bitter rival because she told on us. Stupid dancing child. Um, unfair. I'll run away. Gain 30 prestige. Ooh. Gain How do we gain more prestige by not doing dishes than our father did for imprisoning a noble lord and sticking to his morals? Are you kidding me? Uh, C main gain conscientious. I, I would have kind of personally preferred for us to get that, but it's not such a big deal, I guess. Mystic blind man supposedly works miracles. He appears in villages and cures all manner of ailments. Fine. Ten gold. Work at my court, my friend. Only because we had no other valid candidates there. And now we are once again in debt. My god, this is going to be a really, really hard series, isn't it? Even if, without just the random deaths, but everybody hating us. And who died? Please don't tell me he was a member of my council. I can't afford to hire anyone else. For God's sake, no, we're good. Okay. Two people got looked. Got married without anyone's consent. Oh, for God's sake. Fine. Took him in prison. Oh, he was my chancellor. This sucks. Um, can I just, can I just exile them? We can and take some gold and then we can hire someone new. Good idea. Get out of here. Okay, there we go. Let's use that money to maybe invite someone better to the realm. Let's see if anyone will just join court to start with, with high diplomacy. No. Jesus, this is going to be hard. Um, employ a new courtier. We need a, I like this system as well in the Game of Thrones one. We definitely need this in the base game, huh? We need a Minister of Justice. So this will give us a chance of getting a high, decent diplomacy character. Okay, hey, that's pretty good. I'll absolutely take that. Holy shit, Doc. Welcome aboard. What's up? Let's get you on the... Oh, was he not... Oh, I remember we sacked him, didn't we? Okay, get him on board because he's incredible. Um, send him a gift as well. And let's get him fabricating claims. We will finish our father's legacy. Thank you all for watching. What a... What a bad time for the dynasty, huh? What a bad time for the dynasty. I can't believe Van lasted barely even a fucking episode. Good God. Well, thank God we hey, thank God we got that kid in time. Otherwise, we'll be playing some random branch member of the dynasty. But this way, we have that legacy. We have the legacy going on. Still got the cursed bloodline. Married to a good character. So next generation, we will get our Valyrian steel. That's going to be pretty big. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. As weird as it was, that was genuinely quite a weird one. Thank you for your support on the channel. Thank you for, for subscribing and liking and watching all that garbage. And more importantly, thank you for your support over on Patreon. It is the second. They still haven't finished the list because apparently there are delays, nondescript delays as per usual. But thank you for those of you who have continued support over on Patreon as well. Hopefully we will have those new lists available for tomorrow. If not, 
I'll just have to go through my email and compile it all manually because uh, I, I don't want to wait too long with that one. Thank you for your support regardless, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow for another good fun day with the TU Dynasty. <laughs>